Okay, we got a bunch of stuff. We'll get we some do. of the, the ones that are just like kind of repetitive kind of out, of, out, out of the way really fast. Mm -hmm. So we got more keyboard stuff. Okay, so these are keyboard plates that you would use. Um, you have an enclosure, you have a PCB, and you want to stabilize the um, keys so they don't kind of wiggle back and forth, especially if you're using socketed MX PCBs, which people love. Um, this is a 60% GH60, very standard, common layout. Uh, you see it fits into any of our 60% keyboard shells. We have quite a few of them. Uh, we have this in a couple colors. We have silver. We have a gorgeous uh, blink of purple. Um, oh, here's another angle shot. And then we also have black. Yeah. They're all the same thing, but I just wanted to carry them a couple different colors. Yeah. In addition to um, these mechanical stability plates, we have this kind of this foam um, insert sheet. So this is... Um, an insert that you know, people are like, okay, I want stability, but I also want a little bit of softness. They don't want their um, keyboard to rattle. So it's a little thin piece of die cut foam that you can put um, underneath the PCB or um, between the PCB and, um, so yeah, underneath the PCB and the enclosure. And it just gives you a, it's just a little bit of padding, like one millimeter thick padding. Um, and then of course, all these are for 60% keyboard. So uh, if you're making a keyboard, it's kind of what we recommend you start with. And uh, this is just makes your build a little bit nicer. Yeah. All right, then we got a bunch of these. Um, cool. So we, we have custom keycaps now, but then we also have a way for you just to carry around the custom keycap with you. So let's say uh, you really like your mechanical keyboard, but you know you got to go out once in a while. That's right. So you can bring one of the keys with you. Yeah. Well, I just think these are cool little fidget toys. And also if you want to show off uh, your custom key. So of course we have the animation. Um, it doesn't come with a keycap. We sell tons of cool keycaps, but we're showing them, of course, with Adafruit. Does not come with a human hand. Does not come with a really nice nail job either. For that guy out there who's going to ask. Um, but we did get them in a couple different colors, red, green, blue, and white, which we thought were the most fun. Um, and then let's go to the overhead real fast, and I can show them off because I want to show the them in 3D. Yeah. So I got so all these. Yeah. And uh, we just put more of the GitHub ones in stock. That's true. And then, those GitHub uh, Yeah, keycaps. and this is what it looks like without it on there, but let's go to the overhead. Yeah. So these are all very similar, all right. but again, different colors. So I can press them all at once, um, and they look great. Each one of them comes with a uh, key switch already installed. It's a blue clicky. Um, and um, on the bottom is a CR1220 coin cell battery. This mechanically connects, like, the LED to the the battery, so it, it'll last like seven or eight years um, of use. And then of course you can always uh, use a little screwdriver or something, wedge the key out, replace the battery if you'd like. Um, you even can replace the uh, LED if you if you want to, but um, it's just a fun little keychain. Uh, and we wanted to do a little bit of a giveaway once in a while where people can get one of our keycaps and also light it up. I don't know, I just think these are adorable. Okay. A cute little gift and a fun fidget toy. Strain gauges. Next up, uh, these are strain gauges that we will not be stocking again. Uh, we stock 75 millimeter strain gauges and we got a shipment of 80 millimeter and we didn't want to throw them out because they're, they're still very useful. Um, but that said, after we sell through these 80 millimeter long ones, we will not stock them again. Um, okay. They're a little bit cheaper than the 75 millimeter ones because we're just gonna sell them out. And uh, if, you're, if you're doing a project, you don't need hundreds and hundreds of these. You only need like five to 10 for your project and you won't need them again and you're okay with the slightly longer size. They work great. I think we've got five and 10 kilogram versions. Yeah. The other ones. And then... Solenoid. Uh, adorable little solenoid. This one, uh, it's a little friend. It's a six volt solenoid. A lot of people have been asking uh, for us to please carry more low voltage solenoids because 12 volts, 24 volts is the standard. Um, but this little mini lock solenoid, which is quite popular, um, we have a 12 volt, we've asked for it in six volts. now. The deal is that if you're going to run it as a lower voltage, you're going to have to give it a lot more current because it still needs the same amount of power. So it is a 600 milliamp draw device. So just be aware if you're running it off a of battery or even off of USB, that's kind of the, like the limit of what USB will give you, uh, 500 milliamps or so. Um, that said, it's pretty easy. Uh, it's a pull type solenoid. So when it's unpowered, the little widget thing, the little triangle is sticking out. When you give it six volt power, uh, the triangle pulls in and you can open the box or unlatch, unlatch or unlock something. Um, these are, are, are quite popular little uh, push solenoids or push pull solenoids um, for use in projects like uh, geocaching or if you want to have like a magical box that opens when somebody like scans their fingerprint or their eye or, you know, machine learning project. Um, it has mounting holes, very easy to use. And like I said, you can run off of six volts. You can maybe even get away with five volts. Uh, just make sure again, you need 600 milliamps. Next up. Okay. 
We saw this being used in a bunch of like DIY keyboard projects and I'm gonna stock it. I, I will say, yes, it is not up to the USB-C uh, PD spec, but it does work and a lot of people were using them. And so we have a breakout that if you really want something that fulfills the specification and has the right yeah. resistors, this will work fine on most computers. Every computer I tried on works. It may not work on a power supply that requires uh, power delivery resistors. Um, it's kind of a hacky thing. It's a little bit punk. I like to carry stuff that's a little bit punk sometimes out of spec. Yeah. This is one of those things. Some Again. guy emailed us and said that uh, we flagrant, flagrantly disregarded uh, the USB spec and we're polluting the USB C ecosystem. And, and so, proud of it. so there's, yeah, so we get emails from uh, guys often and they say things like, your code is spewing your code is spewing all over the place because we have like so much open source code. And I've never in my entire life heard or seen emails to dudes from dudes. This is because you made this, Lamour, and I, I think it's this, cool. I'm just carrying it. I think it's cool. Okay, well, I think I think it's cool too. It's a little punk rock, it's a little different. Again, yeah. you care about the PD spec, Anyways, get the version we make with the, with the resistors you on. You get, the products cost money, but that rant was free. That's right. <laughs> um, okay, these are, we had some tower lights last week and um, I saw these from the same supplier, and it, they're, it's kind of weird. It's a hemisphere alarm light. Um, inside is red, yellow, green LEDs, and you can see you can kind of turn them on and off. It's yellow and then green and then red. Um, so it's meant for alarming, but it's like a hemispherical light. And there's two versions. Um, okay, so if you actually go Can back. I go back to that one? Yeah, no. Go on. Yeah, okay. So this version, see how it's got those holes in the side? Um, those holes are for a buzzer. So this version has a buzzer. Um, and it plugs into USB. So one of the nice things about these alarm lights um, is that they show up as a serial port. You just send them commands through Python or shell script or whatever you like, Minicom, and they'll turn on the LEDs and they'll turn on the buzzer. So you don't need to do any wiring. The code is very, very simple. Uh, there's no 12 volt power supply. It's plug and go and you've got this like alarm system. A lot of people like to do little like, oh, when I get email, it blinks. Or if somebody, you know, is, you know, went to my website, it blinks or buzzes or who knows what. Um, this will do the job admirably. It's quite easy to use. If you want to use it through a website, you can even use it with web serial because again, it just yeah, shows up cool. as a COM port. We also have a version um, that looks very similar and uh, it has the same code, the same kind of design, except this one is weatherproof. Now, it doesn't have an IP rating, but I'm going to guess it's something like IP64. It's going to be dustproof and like I wouldn't dunk it underwater, but you could probably splash it with some water and it'll be fine. Um, it is sealed and it doesn't have a buzzer. That's the trade-off. If it had a buzzer and had holes in it, it wouldn't be weatherproof. Yeah. But this one's probably better for you know more robotics or exposed stuff. Um, you could probably have it outdoors as long as it isn't like directly in the rain, um, and you can use it for alarming or um, notifying somebody you know with light, not with sound. The other one with sound. So two different versions. Don't mix them up. You either get a buzzer or you get the weatherproofness. Next up. Um, we've got an update to our 2.9 inch e-ink flexible display. Um, if you do e-ink, you know that e-ink displays are constantly coming out with new chipsets. They, they, they're pretty much the same shape, design, pinout, whatever, but the driver, it changes. The drivers are getting discontinued and uh, replaced like every three months, it seems. Anyways, it's time for the 2.9 inch e-ink display. Um, I think it was using the ILI 0373. It is now using the UC 8151D. We have code in CircuitPython, Python and Arduino no matter what. So no worries, um, it's yeah. a flexible display. I think it's really cool. Um, people were sending us some flexible displays today and I'm like, you can get this e-ink display and it, and it has like 300 by 150 pixels and it works great and it's flexible. Um, check it out and uh, it works with all of our e-ink driver adapter boards, kind of has a standard pinout. Next up. Okay, next up, uh, these are kind of cool. We actually saw these, I think what Naomi had them on her. Yeah, uh, and I immediately um, started making glowing Lego-like bricks yeah. and, and posted it up and uh, cool. was told I didn't use the right capitalization yeah, for Lego. Yeah, it's a Lego police came after you. Yeah. Um, so we got a couple different uh, ones here. And okay. yeah. this is magical when you see it. So we're just going to go to the demos okay, almost almost right away. I wire up the demo. You didn't wire up the demo? I did, but it's like then I had to move it because oh, yeah. the thing was so large. All right, then I'm just going to play this video know. until... Okay, 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 okay. I have a video on our YouTube channel with yeah, these two. Yeah, why don't you play it? No, I can't. I'm I'm doing oh, no? the show right now. Yeah, Sorry. I can't. I can't go to YouTube. Wait, where did my people go? Let me just stall for time here. No, oh, no, no, I'm one. fine. Here's this one. 
look, the show's live. Yeah. Okay. So let's go to the overhead. So if you do have Lego like bricks, you can embed these inside of it and make yes. a lot of cool stuff. And that's they what do I did. Fit. That's what I did. And they should do that too. And they should also stop bugging me about the <laughs> Lego capitalization. The way that. It, do you want to put these in like a Lego cop car? Because then it could be uh, like a Lego cop. Lego yeah, cop I do. Car. Okay. All right. So here's how it works. Uh, this is a um, inductive coil driver. So this driver, you give it. This one in particular is five volts. And here's an inductive coil, and we have inductive coil chargers and like key chargers. You know, they they use inductive the inductive properties where the code is inductive. Um, this is one side of the coil, and then normally on a transformer you have another coil. There's a magnetic field coming out of here. It couples to the other coil, uh, passing over, uh, tra transmitting over electromagnetic energy into the other coil. Um, and so if you have that coil, for example, uh, as a inductor soldered onto an LED you'll see that it glows when it's in the vicinity. Now, like uh, any coil inducting trans inductive transfer system, you want the coils to be coplanar. What does that mean? Is that, see how this coil is like curling around this way? You want it to curl in the same plane. So it works best when it's pointing in the same, you know, it's, it's within the same circular plane. If I tilt this over to the side, it gets dimmer. And then if I have it on its side, it actually turns off because it, the, the electromagnetic current has to go in the same plane. So the only thing is just watch out for that. If you're like, it doesn't work. No, it, it's working. You just have to have them pointing up. That said, this is really cool. These are used often for like models. Um, we see, or again, like Lego or 3D printing things where you don't want to wire up an LED or you can't because you have to embed it in something so thin and small. You don't want a battery pack, but you can have a coil underneath and then, um, you know, it lights it up from below. I also think it'd be cool, cool for arts and crafts. Um, you know, if you're sewing something or you have a wearable and you don't, again, you want to have something that's movable or adjustable or doesn't have wires coming into it, and then you have it powered from this external coil. You get one of the coils, you just power it with five volts. You get a bunch of LEDs in different colors. You get red, yellow, green, blue, two of each um, of these little coils. And um, they look cool and they're nifty. We're going to do some 3D printing projects with these. Yeah. So that's the five volt version. And then if you're like, you know, the one thing about this is it only works, I think, you know, a couple, hold on, let me, works like, you know, one, two, three inches away from the coil. Um, and of course you have to kind of be inside of the coil for it to work best. Maybe you're like, ah, I want something a little bit bigger. I want something to work a little bit more distant. You can upgrade to the larger coil. Now the larger coil is large. Hold on. Mega coil. All right, while you're doing that, I'm gonna, Gonna yeah, show this. so that's okay, a small coil. Go back. All right. Sorry, there's so many coils. Okay, Let's so this is the big, big coil. coil. This is small coil, big coil. Small coil, big coil. You'll notice it's very big. It's a bigger coil. That means it can transmit more electromagnetic energy. But the trade-off is you have to power it with a lot more uh, voltage and current. So instead of 5 volts, you need 24 volts, which is a slightly unusual amount of voltage. We do have a 24 volt power supply. Um, just be aware it's kind of, uh, people don't often have a 24 volt power supply. The bigger coil is fun because you can put the LEDs um, further away in the middle and you could do a lot more fun stuff with it. Yes. Um, people are talking about escape room projects and there's a lot of things you could it's, do yeah. with I mean, this. this is cool. Yeah. So what's nice about this is of course, the coil is bigger. Uh, so you can be much farther. You can be about six inches away. Inducting, you're like, well, the coil is four times larger. Why isn't it four times more powerful? Um, it's because um, the inductance transference is one over R squared or something, one over R cubed. So it, it's not linear. Um, but that said, I'll grab a white one because it shows up very well. Um, you know, it works much, much further away than the other one. If you remember the other coil, it was like two inches. This one is like six to eight inches away. Of course, it depends, you know, what else you have and if it's like perfectly aligned with the uh, plane of the coil. But this one is a little bit, because there's so much yeah. more uh, power, it's a little bit more flexible. Even if you have it um, on its side, it still even lights up, even if it's not coplanar because there's just so much um, power coming out of this coil. Uh, so those are the two coils. The LEDs themselves are the same, but again, one coil big, one coil small. Which do you need? Which do you want? Depends on how far away you want the LEDs to work and how much power you're willing to dump into the system. All right. And next up, start of the show tonight. Besides you, Lady Ada, the community, our customers, everyone in the chat, and the, the OctoCat key and cap. our team is oh the LED glasses panel. Okay, this is the name of the product, LED glasses. Um, 
I don't have a better name for it yet because this is what it is. I've always wanted to have LEDs on our face. We have a bunch of NeoPixel projects that we've posted, but yeah. they always like take some rings and you solder them to a cutie pie and then you know whatever. And I was like, well, what if we made it really easy to do LED glasses projects? Facebook and Ray Ban play their games, and we're going to play this ours. This is ours. This is ours. this is not going to post to Instagram for you, but it will yeah. look hella cool. Um, so here's the thing. Each board is, it's an I2C peripheral. There's a stemic QT connector on either side. There's no microcontroller. Instead, there's a little driver chip in the very center, kind of in, you know, in the center of the temple. And that controls 116 RGB LEDs that are arranged in a kind of interesting way. So Paint Your Dragon uh, came up with a interesting layout. Instead of just having it be just like straight up grid, there's two circles and then there's a grid. I think it's five by 16. Um, overlaid on those circles and so you can have like circular designs or you can have linear text scrolling type designs or you can choose you can have both um, and I thought that was kind of neat because I really like the circular eye design but I also want to be able to scroll text so this demo shows you know it's it's there's a lot of bright light on it so it doesn't look very bright believe me it's, it's plenty bright but you can have text going by and stuff going around the eyes each circuit board you can have one of four different silkscreen there's bug there is cat, there is wolf, and there is dragon. So Phil B did the silk screen for these. And here's the deal. You don't know which one you're gonna get, and we can't control which one you're we gonna get. Either. They are totally random in their box, and we don't know what you're gonna get. We want to try something a little where it's like, a little random, a little chancy. But all four are really beautiful designs, so no matter which one you may get, uh, they're gonna look cool. And of course, the electronics works the same. Um, all right, so I thought you, I you got these? Well, let me show... You want to show them on the overhead, or do you want to wear them? What do you want I to do? I thought I'd wear them to start, so hold on. Let me All right. Lanyard. Lots of live demos today. Okay, so let's go to the uh, front camera. So I've mounted them onto... I, I got these... Um, they're, they're, for lack of a better word, they're like fashion glasses. I guess these are popular with, with K-pop stars. Um, so this is me, and what's cool is, you know, these glasses you can wear over them. So you can see there's a grid. So see the grid is like a rainbow grid. And then there's two circles. And so that's kind of the thing I think is neat is you can, you can choose, I, I'm, I'm switching between the two. I'm looking very cyberpunk. Um, but whether you want this style or the other style or both, you can have text, you can have swirly designs, all sorts of good stuff. So then I thought, let's go to the, uh, to the overhead and I'll show. So yeah, this is them with the LEDs nice and bright and just showing the two designs. Um, so again, this is I2C only. You would connect this to your microcontroller, whether it's Wi-Fi or Bluetooth or it's like a Cutie Pie or whatever. And then you can run our CircuitPython or Arduino library code to control what's on it. Um, the reason we didn't put the microcontroller on here is, is first off, we wanted to make it really simple so people could adapt and adjust it however they want. Um, and second, because usually you would have like a feather or something stuck to the side like here and then um, a little cable to connect with it and then of course if you want to add it's uh, I squared C so I squared C coming in this way and then you can have sensors accelerometers light you know detectors what have you um, on the other side so you can make your own like like you said like Facebook glasses but way better way more colorful not from Ray-Ban yeah and that is new products that's new products <laughs>